Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Amit Adnan, and in this video, we are going to discuss about data activator in Microsoft Fabric. This is one of the most useful feature I can say, and also I like the most the feature in Microsoft Fabric. <laughs> there are a lot actually, but this is one of the cool feature which they are launched, and it actually helps a lot in many different ways. So we'll talk about that in this video. So data activator in Microsoft Fabric take action based on what's happening to your data. So this will be helpful for your real time data. If you want data is coming from IoT devices or any log analytics or any kind of stream analytics kind of thing, then you can make use of the data which is in motion and then you can take action according to the output here. So data activator lets you monitor your data and creates trigger to react to your data changes here. So if you're new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed to it, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now, if you want to look into in deeper about the data activator as an example, so like if you are seeing on the stock market, which is going on real time, if you are using any applications, then you have option about stop loss kind of stop profit kind of thing, right? So you can have a trigger set up on that. So when it reaches to that certain point, it automatically sends your stock kind of thing. And so this kind of thing is kind of activator itself. You are using certain threshold for that, and based on that, it acts according to your action here. Similarly, for example, if you are shipping any kind of medicines to one place or another place, and usually some of the medicine that need to be care, special care, it has to be refrigerated for a certain temperature, and that temperature has to be maintained within the truck itself. So if IoT sensor is installed within the truck and if the temperature goes above or below to the threshold limit, then you need to get a notification to the shipping company or to yourself so that you can inform to them and then take necessary actions accordingly for that. That's one of, the, one of the use case here. Another use case is like if you are working on a kind of arbo plant like reverse osmosis water treatment plant, which they usually have, then whenever the tank fills up, then it has to turn on the motor and then you have to um, refill, I mean, they empty the capacity and redo all the kind of process over there. If the tank is empty, then it has to shut down the thing here, the, uh, shut down the motor here. So in those examples also, we can make use of data activator. Some kind of uh, terminology is there that you can trigger a kind of command to IoT devices so that it can turn on and turn off based on our inputs here. So in this demo, we are going to take an example of the medicine which I just discussed on that and we'll create one by one step over there. So for that, as usual, we need to create a workspace based on the fabric capacity, and then we need to look into that inside to one by one. So I'm now looking into my workspace here, which is the data activator, the folder. Use data activator in Microsoft Fabric. So first of all, you need to create a reflex, and for that, you need to go to real-time intelligence here. Uh, also, you can also go to data activator here. So first of all, let's go on to data activator. And here you have an option about reflex preview and reflex sample. So we can create here the reflex preview option. And it's going to create a new reflex. It's nothing but it's kind of item within the data activator here. And we can get our data, not only the sample data. Right now we are using the sample data, but in reality, in real production, we can also use our existing data which comes from stream events and also from Power BI data set here. So here you have a gateway data and also we have a sample data. Right now we'd like to start with new sample data. We are creating reflexes, sending packet in shipment scenario is going to create those sample information for us. So we can also use Power BI ties. Generally, if you have a Power BI report and each and every time, each and every visual, we have option about set data alerts. So those alerts you can set up here using reflex. All right, it has created multiple things here, but first we'll look into one by one. So first of all, if you see this look and feel, and at the bottom of your screen, we have a data and design. So data tab and design tab. So whenever we have this data tab, we can look into that. These are all the events which is mapped here and it's adding up information at the real near real time information. You see it is selecting the highlighting that information, which means it is loading up the data at the real time. So similarly, we have this kind of packages. If you want to get further more data, then also you can create a new data here. So on the top left, you have the option about get data. From here, you can get the data. 
from different sources. Yeah, right now it has an option about Azure Event Hub, Azure IoT Hub, and Fabric Workspace Item Events. So you can also consider that to create an event. Or else you can just click on this icon, which is assign your data on the right hand side, which you have the information. So let's select on the set package in shipment as a kind of data which we are receiving right now. And from here, we can select an object and we can define the names of that. So let's give the name here to be like Tontoso shipment medicine and then assign key column. So we need to select few of the key column, right? like city we need here, and we also need multiple things. Um, we need special temperature we need because if temperature goes up and down, that is we need here, but assign key column. So key column is basically the package ID, that's the reference number. And additional properties if you want to add, then you can use city here called chain type here, and also we can use special care and the temperature for now we are going to select only these four and then we have option about save go to the design mode that's it so once you click on that then this will save the information and it will bring to your design mode and here you can see we have a different thing one is a package and inside of the package we have a triggers properties and events for now the package which we created here is the contour source shipment medicine if i go back to the data tab now so I'm selecting this events here and based on that event, I'm creating a package. And from that package, we need to define three steps. One is trigger, first of all, events and then trigger and then uh, properties. What are the properties which we have it here? But here by default, the properties we already selected the columns, nothing but the column itself from the previous menu. And the event which we already defined here. So combining these three things like the event property and triggers is actually called as a package here. So we've created a package here, control source shipment medicine. Inside to that, we use the events of package in transit from the previous menu and selected these three columns here. So now this is the information which is showing up here. Now we need to create a trigger here. So what do you want to do it here now? So on the top ribbon, you have option about new trigger. So once you click on that, it is added a new trigger inside to this package, but instead of that, I'd like to delete this one. I'd like to create on the new one which we created here. So let's minimize this and selecting here the temperature, for example, and selecting the temperature on the left hand side is actually loading the information here on the central canvas. That's beautiful. So here, if you want to add any summarization filter, I can also do that. We'll dig deeper into that in future videos, but for now, we'll just create a trigger here. So click on the trigger. So what trigger you want here? So it is added now into the trigger. We can just rename the trigger. So this has to be temperature between 33 to 41. And here select the property of the event. So existing property and this has to be temperature. Right, so if the temperature here, yeah, it is loading the temperature. Now what? So if the temperature goes what? I need to have a numeric or logical or common action here. So detect type from this option we have, which is a numeric option because temperature is in numbers. So this has multiple options here. Becomes greater than, becomes greater than or equal to, becomes this one or changes by or exit range kind of thing. So what does it mean actually is it purely depends on your situation to situations. So if you click on the becomes greater than, for example, and it is asking about each time or number of times or a space for a certain period of time. So here, if I select, for example, becomes greater than 40, uh, example 33, right? So 33. And is, is it has to be each time or it has to be number of time. If it has to be count like five times within 10 minutes. So we can define that parameters here. That's really cool, right? So because there may be certain cases where you need to define your detections, like alert, if it is goes 33 degree temperature five times within 10 minutes of the time, then you have to make a trigger. If it is not, then you can say the stays for the 10 minutes. So the 10, 33 temperature stays along for the 10 minutes, then only it will send you any trigger alert for that. So if you need this kind of alert, then you can set up that. But if you want to do kind of thing exit range, so you want to set up a kind of range here. If this goes below 33 and if this goes beyond 41, 
each time, every time if this goes these kind of ranges, then it has to send you an alert. So for that, we can also add additional filters here because this is applicable only for the medicines item which is running inside to the track here. If it is, we have a more than other items, then we don't need to consider that. So we need to add a filter on that. So what is the filter here? So I just want to use the filter here and filter is equal to, this has to be, we need to specify the name of the city. It has to be Redmond and add a filter again. So this time we can have a cold change to it and this has to be equal to medicine. So this time it has to be special care equal to medicine and cold chain type equal to refrigerated and add another filter cold chain type. Now this has a special care to be medicine. All right. So if this comes with these three parameters and if this stays uh, every time, if you have this one, as this is the dummy data which is loading up in the information, if this is going within this range, then it's going to show up the information here. And based on that, what do you want to take an action? So in the action, we have option about, we can send an email. Uh, we also have a Teams message. If you want to send a Teams notification or run a selected item in the fabric. That's amazing, right? So if you want to add any items in the fabric, then you can also run that job. For example, if you are getting a data and if it is loaded completely, like if you're not getting any data on this information in real time, then you can refresh your Power BI artifacts on that. That's beautiful. So for now, I'm just using this email option here. So it is added here by default my email ID. I can add this information. If you want to add any kind of property for that, here you can see we have a tag option. You can select from the tag and here headlines. So this has been trigger optional message. I'd like to select these things here at city. I just want to add up to the cold chain, also the special care and also the temperature here. And on the further go up here. So far there is no data available for these criteria. And finally, we can send an email alert for that and that we have option about save and start. I have deleted all this one here just to make sure that whether it is loading it perfectly or not. If after loading, after deleting this filter option, then it is coming up here. And also you can see it is actually loading up all this information and it's going to send an email alert for me. If I click on start, then it's going to send an email alert for me here. So repeating it again on the top, we have centered here this to be temperature and the temperature if this greater than 35 each time, then it has to send an email alert for us. So what is the email alert is also giving all the information for us. We need to click on save and then click on start in order to generate that. So I have this report real time dashboard in fabric using KQL. So we have option here set alert and click on by neighborhood. If I click on this one, I hope this is going to create a reflex options and then we can manage that accordingly. Yeah, on the right hand side, it will add a new option which is monitoring of this one. Check on each event group by which is neighborhood field when the count condition. So it is asking about on each event group by neighborhood, which is one column we have used here when the count, which is the aggregated value which we used here and condition. It changes from or goes from kind of thing. If this greater than or equal to kind of thing, right? If this is exit increased by is less than is greater than value here. This has to be 100, for example, then send me an email or send me a Teams message. Uh, save a location on this reflex. Actually, this has to be saved into one item where it is to be added here. So here it is asking about send an email. Okay, there is no option to configure here at the moment, but we have an option here. First of all, save a location. This has to be inside to this one. And instead of that, I have a two one reflex available. So you want to add that or you want to create a new one. So let's create a new one without disturbing that. So this has to be my reflex real time dashboard. Zero one and click on create. Now this is going to create me those informations and then we look into that how this can be achieved. So in the previous part, we have seen about how this can be done using a regular approach, but this is actually something we are connecting directly from this real time report as a kind of new alert here. Yeah, the alert was created and my this dashboard and this conditions is met. You can open the reflex in the view. So let's open up this one. All right, amazing. So if I just scroll up here, so now this is taking up all these properties here. You can see we have a package here 
we have a trigger property, we don't have anything here because we don't have any fields from there and we have events here. So it's taking the count here and this count is actually, what is the count here? Is more than 100 itself, which is showing up here because we set the parameter to be more than 100 itself. So every 30 seconds when it refresh, it is going to send us the information here. So let's wait for another few seconds whether this is going to trigger something here or not. So right now it is showing up here 11, 11, 0, 1. And we'll wait for a few more seconds. It is refreshing it here. No, no information here because there is no information come from the data. So that's the reason it is not showing up here. That's pretty cool. So what is the option here? So is greater than 100 each time. I'm saying that the yeah, it is each time. In that case, I need to send an email. So the count is above 100. So trigger condition is met. And now I need to add some information. I don't have any property here. That's the reason the property symbol is blank here like we have seen in the previous one we had the property enabled we can select any one of those information over here all right i think this looks good actually um yeah that's the thing and now we need to set and start for this one right now it's already start here we just need to stop this one if you don't want to consume your capacity on that all right as this doesn't have any properties here let's click on the data just to see what the data brings up here you see the data is actually showing up here it was shown some information and then it disappeared. Okay. Yeah, you can see this is showing up timestamp, neighborhood, and then the count information and uh, information here. Right? So we have a neighborhood information, so we can use this as a kind of property here. So let's click on this one, the design tab, clicking on the properties, and then we can specify this new property here. And then it's going to add a new property. You can type here, this has to be neighborhood right neighborhood name for example and here from where you want to pick that information so i'm selecting this here this is from the event stream and this is the kql which we are used here and from here we need to pick up this as a neighborhood the column name that's amazing we added this one and if i go to this one trigger option i need to save this one first yes so if i go to this one now we have this label enable and we have this headline the subject this to be space add this one neighborhood that's amazing so even on the headline you can also add this one this head neighborhood thing all right now clicking on the save this one and it is asking about save and update so your changes will be saved but will not be synced with the trigger that you currently ranking to save and uh, to keep these changes or select save and update to keep these changes and have them sync to the running one yeah i just want to sync the running one if you want to add a new email ID also, let me try if that works or not. So let's add a new email ID here. Okay. This is not picking up here. For now, this is going to create only within the organization's email ID here. That's the reason it is not asking, it is not allowing me to look the information here. So this is how you can set up this data activator reflex in Microsoft Fabric. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.